Hey everybody and welcome to our webinar on large group personal training, the evolution of group exercise. Uh, we're bringing you this webinar today to either explain to you the difference between group exercise as we've known it for the last few decades and um, how you can evolve your group training into large group personal training. Or if you're not currently running any, any group training and you're doing all one-on-one, -on -one, we want to show you a way that you can leverage your time, increase your profits, and yet still maintain your credibility as an exercise professional while running large groups. So with that being said, let's get started. My name is Steve Long. I've uh, been in the industry for over eight years. I'm the owner of Complete Fitness Results in St. Louis, Missouri, and also Breakthrough Performance and LW Fitness Systems with Jared Williver. Um, over the last few years, I've, I've done a lot in the industry, getting some, some uh, recognition with the top five best personal trainers in St. Louis and, and uh, top five best boot camp instructors, top 25 fitness industry rising stars, and amongst other things. Uh, the point today is that you know, we, I, I have a lot of experience in the industry, um, a specialist in many different things, but most importantly, I'm a boot camp instructor. Over the last three to four years, I've been running a lot of fitness boot camps and been trying to basically take what I've learned to the next level day after day after day. Uh, with me on that is Jared Williver, who couldn't be here today because he's busy in the trenches doing some training actually right now. Uh, so I'll be speaking on his behalf. Uh, Jared, same thing. Also over eight years experience. He's got his master's degree in exercise science. Uh, multiple business owner, specialist in multiple different things in, in the field of fitness and sports performance, and additionally also a boot camp instructor. So me and Jared, like I said earlier, have been running a lot of fitness boot camps and I've had an extreme passion to take that group training to a higher level, knowing that our personal training and our semi-private training options were always the better option for people, um, but yet not each person could always do those options. We had to take our boot camp option to the next level, and that's what we're bringing you today. So, why are we doing this? Boot camps are everywhere, they're popping up all over the place. Um, there's probably one around the corner for you right now. More and more people are searching for boot camps. Um, they're an economical option for the client, uh, it saves them a ton of money. Um, it's a lot funner with with more people around to help drive you and push you. The social support is huge. It's, it's just a, an overall better experience than one-on-one -on -one training for a lot of people. Um, some people not, but for the majority of people, they really do like the boot camp experience. And for the trainer, it's a great idea because it, you get the opportunity to help a lot more people in the same or less amount of time. And, um, you know, I've been there working 60 hour weeks doing one-on-one -on -one, trying to help as many people as I can. And all it really does is frustrate you that you're not making the difference that you'd like to make and causes burnout. So we need to, uh, we need to know that it is important to be able to help as many people as possible. And this is a great way to do it if you're doing it right. Uh, some negatives about uh, the boot camps. Obviously, with the boot camps popping up around <clears throat> every corner, you're getting a lot of bad boot camps. So uh, you're lumping yourself in with those people, and that, that is not ideal. Uh, additionally, boot camp program design typically is not as good as one-on-one -on -one or semi-private program design. Trying to work with a lot of different people typically waters down the, the training style, and we know that we've come to a solution to solve that problem. Uh, we can help. We have a lot of firsthand experience in the group training industry. Um, and what we have seen over the years working with boot camp instructors and personal trainers, sports performance coaches, going to tons of different seminars, visiting lots of different gyms and having people visit our gyms too, is that we think the group training could be a whole lot better if there was just more examples of good group training. You know, there's plenty of bad examples, but who are you following that is doing really good, solid boot camps, um, really focusing on assessments, corrective exercise, red lighting, um, providing the, the greatest experience possible for their groups? 
Um, you know, there's a couple of people out there doing some good stuff, but we want to really give you the blueprints to, to help take your group training to the next level. We just feel there's a lack of understanding on how to deliver quality group training um, to give people those same results as they get in personal training. Over the last few years, we've been raising the bar. Um, we want to give you those resources right now to make sure that we're not the only ones out there um, delivering this high quality group training. We want to share our systems with everyone to make sure that this becomes the norm within the industry. We put a lot of hard work into it and we're ready to share it with the world. So why am I bashing on boot camps? What's wrong with today's typical boot camps anyway? First off, you have a lot of non-certified trainers out there running boot camps. Um, you have trainers that if they are certified, maybe not have the type of experience that we would look for in a quality personal trainer. But I mean, the gist of it is that the college kid next door is running a fitness boot camp to work for his beer money. And that guy to the client is your equal. You're both fitness boot camp instructors. And we want to make sure that you can separate yourself from the rest of the pack, especially the college kid next door working for beer money. We can't be as fitness professionals grouped in with those people. We have to set a new standard, and that's what we're here for. So what can we do about it? Large group personal training. Um, I'm sure you've heard this term before. Like, we want to change, we want to throw away the terms boot camp and, and group exercise, and we want to focus in on group personal training. Now, that's kind of a dichotomy within itself or contradiction, but at the same time, it's there to let people know that although you are training in a group, you are going to get the personal the personal attention that you need to, to reach your goals. So how do we introduce large group personal training? First of all, you have to have um, a staff who cares. You care, obviously. Um, if, you, if you don't care about your clients and you don't care about the industry, I would highly recommend getting out of this industry immediately um, and leave this industry for the people who do care. Um, second, don't compete on price. You don't want to be the cheapest boot camp in town. Let the college kid working for beer money be the cheapest in town. You charge the highest prices in town so people know that you're the real deal. You have the best quality service. Everyone knows that you get what you pay for. So set those prices high, get what you deserve, and let the clients know that you're worth it. Uh, less people per group, but more cost per client. So if we're going to have high prices, we want to lower the amount of people in each group. I mean, we want to have we're, we're we're doing large group personal training here, so obviously we're we're talking about still having big groups. Twenty to thirty people is reasonable. We just don't want to be doing. We can't have a group of one hundred people and still call it personal training. Um, it's going to have to be a little bit smaller than that to be able to deliver um, everything that the client needs to, to be successful. Which brings me to the next point. It's really important that you over deliver and, and really make the value of your training above and beyond what they expected when coming into a fitness boot camp. And there's more on that to come. We're going to move into an entire section on, on ways to over deliver uh, coming, going forward. Uh, another issue with boot camps is the generic program. Um, the same exercises for everyone. And, and we know that people need individualized programs. There are people are individuals. They need different workouts. This is a fact. Um, you see a lot of bad form in, in the boot camps out there and the group exercise. Um, and, and, and let me stop myself right there. When I say boot camp, I mean all group exercise. I'm talking about... Um, step classes, CrossFit, um, in anything where you're training large amounts of people, we want to make sure it's, it's customized and that people are doing things that are for their specific needs. And, um, and, and that's what I mean when I say a blanket term like boot camp or group personal training for this webinar's purposes. Uh, back to the point. Uh, exercises are not necessarily in the best form. Uh, it's hard to work with, you know, 50, 100 people or, or even 20 people for that matter, even 10. It's a lot harder to make sure the form is good with multiple people than it is with one or two. So uh, that's definitely a drawback uh, for the boot camps. Um, some exercises aren't right for certain people, like distance running. Uh, people are left behind when, when you're in that situation. Uh, 
you can't just have everyone do the same thing and expect everybody to be able to do it well. Uh, it, it's obvious that programming needs to be individualized. And as we've seen with the majority of the group training, that it's not. And, and people feel left out or people end up getting hurt or people just don't get the results that they want. And that's not what we're trying to accomplish when we're, when we're doing our training. So um, another issue is balance. Uh, when you see that, especially the outdoor training, you see a lot of upper push and quad dominant workouts just due to the fact that the exercise selection is based off resources and, and the fun stuff and not quality training. So it's a, when you're doing the mountain climbers and climbing the park benches and doing step ups and squats, I mean, that's all quad stuff. We know that it's hard to get into posterior chain work without some weights or some bands or some, or, or some different uh, pieces of equipment to help hit that posterior chain. And same thing with upper body pulling. I mean, tons of push ups, tons of dumbbell presses and band presses, but, but not near enough pulling and not near enough uh, hip dominant work are going on in the majority of the group training that we've seen. So uh, we feel that is another major negative to, to the group training that we see. Uh, touched on it earlier that the exercise is based on resources because a lot of times you're outside or you're in a place that's not necessarily like a gym where you have everything that you need to train large groups. So uh, once again, the program design suffers just due to the fact that your resources are limited. So what do we do about that? I'm not, we're not the kind of uh, people that want to give you issues without solutions. So here's what we got for that. Uh, demonstrate multiple progressions for each exercise. That way people have their own uh, variation of each exercise that they can do depending on their fitness level and no one gets left behind that way. Um, so basically, this should be self-explanatory. And on, on the, on the uh, picture here, we have Nick doing a stick RDL where he's learning his deadlift patterning, where he then progressed that into a kettlebell RDL, which then could then progress, progress into a kettlebell swing, which could then progress into a kettlebell snatch. But the first things first, we need to work him through the basic level stuff and bring him up. So we need to make sure all those progressions are available for each client. We couldn't just explain the exercise as kettlebell swing and just expect everybody to start doing kettlebell swings. First, people need to get glute activation. They need to make sure that their hips are working properly. And then we need to pattern that and move up the line. So just picking one exercise is not going to cut it. Uh, make sure you have the appropriate equipment. Just know that uh, your workouts need to be balanced and, and you can't write your programs based upon what you have. If you don't have the right equipment, it's time to get it. If you don't have the right facility, it's time to move into a different one. And we'll touch on that later. Uh, no distance running. Just stop the distance running in general for fitness boot camps. People, I, I mean, I've talked to client after client after client who have come to our training facility and said, the reason I'm here is because I can't run. And we, we know that most people aren't even equipped to run at this point. They need to work on some, some other things before they start running. A little bit of running is fine, but when we're talking about run three miles and then we're going to do some kettlebell swings or run three miles and then we're going to do 100 push-ups, that is just not a quality program design for the majority of people. Um, and finally, use timed intervals instead of reps or predetermined distances. So it's a lot easier to train a wide variety of different people from different fitness levels when you're using time. Um, college kid, or yeah, college kid who is uh, in phenomenal shape training for sports, yeah, he might be able to knock out 100 squats, but then you tell his grandma who's in the same class to knock out 100 squats, it's just not going to happen. Grandma's going to get left behind for sure. So we want to make sure that in those situations, we're going to just give a certain period of time, anywhere between – it doesn't matter, 30 seconds to a minute. Say we're squatting for 30 seconds to a minute. Get in as many squats as you possibly can in that amount of time. And then we're doing a little bit of density training, and we're keeping people from uh, being left behind or doing the wrong thing. Uh, the next thing, the next issue with uh, boot camps or group exercise is a lack of assessments. Um, we've heard it many times before. If you're not assessing, you're guessing. So do you know your client? How well do you know your client, especially when they first walk in the door? Uh, how do you know what your client should and shouldn't be doing? 
Are you leaving it up to them to figure it out on their own? Are they the exercise professional or are you? Uh, where do you start your client? How do you know which progression is the best for them right now? Uh, the example I gave earlier with the, with the stick hip hinge and the kettlebell swing, or do we need to establish glute activation? How do you find that out? Do you just do it on the fly and hope for the best? How do you explain to them what they should and shouldn't be doing? Um, how do you explain to them that this isn't necessarily what they should be doing at the moment and they need to work into, they need to work into that whenever they're ready? Here's what we do. Screening. This is the most important thing in any training program. And I think a lot of people might do some sort of screening and assessment, but then when it comes to large groups, they all of a sudden start screening in during the workout or screening on the fly or just saying, well, there's plenty of progression, so they'll find the right one. But if you want to take your training to the highest level and make sure you're doing the right thing and you want to bring your group training as close as possible to personal training, screening or assessments is an absolute must. There's no getting around it. This is something you have to do if you want to take your training to the next level. Everyone, there, there, there are a lot of people who are getting on board with this, screening their groups now, and if you're not getting on board, it won't be long. You'll be the one left behind. And if we want to talk about maintaining your credibility as a fitness professional, this is a major way to make sure you're doing it. So basically, once you get your screen results, um, you can base your exercise selection off the screen results instead of just randomly guessing. Uh, it also allows you <clears throat> to have a scoring system in place to explain to your clients what their weakest links are, what needs to be improved, and they can watch their scores improve and see that it's actually happening. Um, it also gives you the ability to have a red light system. Um, red light system is basically exercises. Is uh, When we red light an exercise, that means that we are pulling an exercise because it will do more harm than good. For example, if you have a shoulder mobility issue, um, a one on the functional movement screen, we red light overhead pressing. We know that overhead pressing is not gonna be ideal for you with a shoulder mobility one. Uh, once you have a two or three, you're clear and you're good to go. And we will red light that one, we'll give you a corrective exercise or a drop down exercise and if that's your only red light or if that's your only um, issue on the screen, then we're going to smoke everything else. I mean, we're going to work you hard. But on the, on the movement patterns or issues that, that there's a dysfunction or pain, those are things we need to take care of. And if you're not doing that on, in your group training and you're just letting people figure it out on their own or drop down because it doesn't feel right to them, I mean – after doing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of group training sessions, I've seen that people don't do that. They know or they think that working out as hard as possible is doing a good job. And that's true. Like you, you definitely want to work out hard, but you have to also train smart. And they don't know the difference between that. They, they, they just know uh, no pain, no gain, go hard, get results, things like that. But um, if, if, if their movement pattern is, has a dysfunction, we know it's going to cause them more harm than good. They're either going to get injured or they're going to not get the results that they're looking for. So with screening, we can, we can bring that in to where we know exactly what to do with each client. Uh, people are getting hurt in, in boot camps and CrossFit and a lot of these other hardcore uh, group training uh, protocols. And that's, that's a major, major deal with, uh, with group training. So people are getting hurt in boot camps inside and outside of the session. We're causing them long-term postural issues, um, overcompensation issues with some of the exercises that we're choosing, uh, some of the patterns that we're, we're giving people. And, um, I mean, like I earlier, like I said, this, in order to bring it to the next level, you have to make sure that you're doing the right thing for your clients and hurting your clients or worst best case scenario, not improving their weakest links is, is not the way to go. So with the screen, you can find out what their weakest links are and you can start to improve on those. Um, people sit all day and then they get off work and then they just hop into a fitness boot camp. And our culture isn't ready for this. It's, it's not the way it used to be. People are less active than they have ever been. And it's just a different era in human movement. Um, 
we can't assume that when someone walks in the door, they're ready to get their butt kicked. We just can't assume that anymore. We, we have to do things the right way. We have to know that it's like, a, like we said earlier, a new era in human movement. People aren't the same. You're not getting the same quality of client that you used to anymore. And, and, um, so to train them as though everyone is perfectly fine and they're, they're an athlete and just start ripping into people, it's not the way to go. So what do we do about that? Screen your clients. Obviously we touched on that earlier. That's going to allow you to know, uh, what you can and can't do with your clients. Um, the FMS screen specifically, the scoring criteria will give you a good idea of your client's risk of injury. I mean, it's been proven in study after study that people under a 14 on the functional movement screen have a much higher risk of injury than people that are over a 14. Um, we also know that, this, first of all, we know that the first uh, indicator of future injury is previous injury. So um, that's something that we want to work around. Uh, the second biggest indicator of future injury is asymmetry. And that's something else that we're going to find on the screen. So once again, coming back to the screen again, really, really important to make sure that you're bringing up the quality of your group fitness training. Um, we can build correctives into your program now. Uh, with the screen, uh, we, we know exactly what your weakest link is, so we can put those correctives in your program. Uh, working on those weakest links and asymmetries is going to help clear your chance of injury. Um, we're going to red light exercises that do more harm than good. So like I said earlier with the shoulder mobility example, your chances of getting a shoulder injury are extremely high if you're doing overhead pressing with shoulder impingement or a shoulder mobility issue. So if we red light that and give you some correctives, we know that that's something that's going to eventually work its way out and you'll be able to push hard on that particular pattern without injury. Um, offer the appropriate progressions for each exercise. Um, we need to make sure that, like I said earlier, there are plenty of different options for your clients to choose from. So they're at a, a exercise progression that's right for them. Yes, it's great to work hard, but it's a, you're going to get a lot more results if you're working smart at a level that is right for your body and giving your body exactly what it needs. Um, another way to make sure your clients don't get hurt, keep the intervals short for the complex exercises and use simple exercises for the long ones. So for example, Let's go back to kettlebell swings. Uh, in, in large group training, you, you don't necessarily want to do kettlebell swings as like a minute and a half long interval with 10 seconds rest. You're going to end up with some back pain, guaranteed. Um, so for kettlebell swings, we usually do like a 30-30 or a 10-20, something like that for power. Um, if we're doing the long intervals, like the minute on stuff, then we're going to do easier exercises like band rows or step ups and things like that. So. Um, Program the easier exercises for longer periods of time and make sure on the hard stuff you're doing it for shorter periods of time and you're giving your people plenty of time to recover in between sets. They're going to be tired and they're going to get a great workout regardless of if they're plastered on the floor dead from doing a minute of all the hardest exercises in the world. It's not about kicking their butt. It's about getting the results they want. So keep them injury free and you'll keep them as clients and keep them feeling good. You'll keep them as clients forever. Another major issue with specifically boot camps is that your training studio is a park. Um, we're talking about being professional and, and taking the industry to the next level. And I don't think with park training, we're, we're going to get there. Um, anyone can open a business in a park. Obviously, college kid working for beer money can easily open a business in the park just by saying that he's now a personal trainer and he's got a business in a park. Um, your, comp your competition is training right next to you. Now that may be a drawback. It might be a good thing. If you're a top quality uh, fitness professional with a great program that's outside, which is very possible, training outside is not necessarily um, determines that you're a bad trainer, that your training program is bad. It just makes it a lot harder for you. Um, but the thing is, it's having the people train next to you, not necessarily the best idea. It's a much better situation if you have your own little world where your people are at and um, they're focused on you and you only. Uh, lack of equipment and resources, which we touched on earlier. Um, it's a lot easier to have a studio 
or a place where you can store your equipment and bring it out as necessary instead of toting it back and forth from place to place in your car. It's just not a professional situation and, um, and it shows to your clients. Dirty, hot, rainy, snowy, inconsistent. Um, working out outside is fun, but at the same time for an, a consistent, regular, solid program for people to come year in, year out. I mean, depending on your, your area and, and what type of um, situation you have, more than likely, it's not going to be the situation that's going to lend to be the most professional. So if you are training outside and you have a good quality program, that's great. But if you're just doing it to bridge the gap, it's time to take it to the next level. So what do you do about it? Uh, start with renting space at a rec center or another existing business. And, and I started my boot camp in the Brentwood Rec Center in, in the St. Louis area. And it was not ideal, but it was definitely better than outside. And it didn't take but two months before I was able to, to get my own studio, which was just a 900 square feet place. But it was very easy to train 15, 18 people uh, with, the, with the program that I wrote. It was, it was mainly a stationary program, but it got people great results. Um, and, it, and it was a good, clean program design that people loved. Um, and then from there, you know, we added on uh, to an, we moved to another building and then another building until now, you know, we're in a 9,000 square foot facility that started as a 900 square foot facility. And now we have, you know, large group personal training, one on one personal training, semi private sports performance. We have it all. But it all started at a rec center. And I think if I would have started outside, I don't know if my group training would have ever evolved into anything. I probably just would have quit and continued doing semi-private and said that this large group training is not for me. Um, know that clean is professional. Clients really look at the cleanliness of where you're training. So obviously outside, that's not the case. Um, if you're going to rent a rec center, make sure you can store some equipment there and make sure that it's clean. <clears throat> Those are two of the most important things about about um, the place that you're looking for is your starter location if you are training outside. <laughs> the next thing is that a lot of trainers are only addressing workouts instead of the big picture of fitness training. Excuse me. Um, people in a one-on-one -on -one program design, I would hope that your clients just don't come in, get their butt kicked, and walk out the door. I would hope you offer a lot more for your clients than just workouts. And that should be the same thing with group training. You want to make sure that you're addressing the big picture. So nutrition. Are you addressing nutrition in, in your group training? Uh, here's some ways to do it if you're not. A membership website. Um, and it doesn't have to be a paid website. At Complete Fitness Results, we have a free website that we built on one of those free website, buildersweebly.com. And um, it's basically a bunch of great extra nutrition info and info about the program that they can read up on uh, when they're not in the gym. Because obviously with group training, you, you can't reach, you can't spend an entire hour educating one person. And in the heat of the moment in group training, you're spending most of your time coaching more than you are talking about nutrition. So we want to make sure we have these options. Um, some group nutrition coaching options are also good to add in. So in your spare time, if you have any, uh, it's a good idea to just do some, start open some, some group nutrition courses where people can learn the basics about nutrition, uh, maybe stay motivated by the weekly accountability or the bi-weekly, however long you said it, by the accountability and, um, and stay on course. They can learn, they can be accountable, and you can make a little extra money in the process. Um, handouts, we give out a monthly newsletter and then we give out random ha handouts um, to our clients every time that we have something to give them. We have a big stack to give to them, so we're educating them as much as possible on nutrition. Uh, blog posts, uh, we print those out and we hand those to people and we also have them on the member website and we also have them on our main Complete Fitness Results blog. Newsletters, either via email or handouts are a great idea. And then uh, supplements, whether you have um, a supplement store within your gym or you just have uh, something they can order from an order form or you go get them and bring them to them. Like this is an easy way to, 
increase your clients' results and take your business to the next level by bringing in another aspect, which is nutrition. Um, Off-day workouts. Though another thing that should be addressed, if I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one client, then I write their program for when they're not with me. Same thing for group training, except you can't sit around and write personalized programs for each one of your group training clients if you have a lot of clients. So um, sometimes we will handwrite the, the programs for the people if they're going out of town or something like that. But we also have the members website, which has uh, five or six, you know, go to I'm out of town workouts and off day conditioning workouts that people can do um, to make sure that. When they're not here, they're covered, and they're not just going to go do some random stuff that they were doing before they came in. Uh, traveling, once again, same thing as off-day workouts. We want to make sure that either we're writing them programs or we have a website that has a lot of good uh, general programs on there that they can do. And when I say general, this is still taking into account that they know their screen results. They know their corrective exercises. They know their red lights just by being clients here. So when they watch these workouts, they know what they should and shouldn't be doing also. Uh, goal setting is one of the biggest aspects of training. And a lot of times, the majority of times, that definitely gets passed up or overlooked in group training. So you can either do individual or group goal setting sessions. Uh, we try to do a goal setting session on intake. We, In my particular business, we have a dietitian on staff who's very good at the goal setting sessions who who on intake, we set, we set them up with her and we give them one free goal setting session and then we have a three month follow up to make sure that they're doing the things that they discussed in the first session. Um, like I said, individual or group, just make sure that you are, you are setting goals with your clients because it's the most important thing. You don't want them just walk into your training facility or your workouts and just start working out. Uh, we want to know why they're working out. They need to know that you care and this is a great way of showing it. So goal setting is huge. And additionally, on our members' website, we also have a section dedicated to goal setting, um, which has our goal setting sheets and, and um, different uh, short-term goal suggestions and things like that that they can use to, to make sure that they're staying on point and keeping their goals um, on the forefront of their mind. Um, educating your clients on your philosophy. So another big thing that uh, gets looked over. So once again, handouts, newsletters, your blog, and um, Facebook is one that's not on here that's also a good one. And make sure you have like a little two minutes before and after where, where you have a topic that you wanna talk about to your group training clients. So you know, before each workout, we might wanna talk about the, the benefits of, uh, for example, tissue quality. Um, after the workout, we might want to throw in a quick two minutes on nutrition and give them some nutrition advice. Uh, we might want to talk about the benefits of rest and recovery, off weeks, things like that, and just kind of reinforce what we do in those times so people are hearing it over and over again, and it starts to become um, more and more their philosophies also. This is currently over-delivering what we do. So a lot of things that we just talked about, you don't see. Um, so it's definitely over delivering, but we would like that to be the standard of group training. And that is why we need you. Uh, the industry needs you. It's time to step up. It's time to do your part to improve the quality of group personal training. Um, we are there for you. We want to, what we're doing and honestly, I've already, it, it is, uh, it's August right now, at the time I'm recording this. I've been to 14 different educational seminars this year in order to make sure that I'm learning everything that I possibly can so I can take that information and bring it into the group training world. Um, Jared, same thing. He's been with me on almost every one of these. And, and we were constantly educating ourselves, constantly applying what we learn to group training so we can take that information and share it with you. Um, so please visit our website. Please share any good tips and, and uh, things that you have to make group training better. Um, share our website with anyone that you possibly know. We love to help. We're, yes, we, we're in business to make money, 
but we're in business to do what we love first and make money second. So this is definitely a product of our passion and, and we love doing this. We love helping you. And we really thank you for giving us the opportunity to, uh, to share what we know with you. Um, how to get started. I know that we, we touched on a lot of good stuff, but the biggest thing that, that people ask us is, okay, how do I do the screening and corrective exercise? Like you've told me to do it. I know it's a good thing. I totally believe I should be doing it, but how do I do it? I mean, we've been to a lot of different seminars over the years where people have been asking us for our system. So out of necessity, we have basically documented our system to put it out there for everybody. And that is Smart Group Training Volume 1, Screening and Corrective Exercise. So we're putting together a, a series of, of uh, training resources to basically give out our entire training system and how we have taken our boot camps and turned them into group personal training. And we want to share it with you. So this is the first installment. How to screen, how to screen large groups, how to incorporate those correctives, how to incorporate red lighting. Uh, done for you workouts, all the done for you resources that you need, emails to go to your clients that explain everything. It is all done for you. It's a complete screening and corrective exercise system for your business in your hand. Uh, the regular price on this is $179. Uh, we were told from, from, from various business mentors that this is at least a $300 product, but and, and it, it is definitely a $300 product. And if we're going to sell it for $300, I actually would value it at $3,000. I wish that three years ago when I first started trying to incorporate more of the one-on-one -on -one philosophies in the group training, I would have had this in my hand. Um, this is a done-for-you system to, to, to really incorporate the FMS and incorporate group screening into your business in seven days. And if I could have done that in seven days instead of three years, I would have gladly paid much, 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 much more than $300. My point is, at the $179 price point, we want to get this out to as many people as possible. We want people changing the industry, and that's why our prices are low. And for the people that took the time to listen to me talk about this and, and go through this little sales pitch here, um, we want to hook you up. So for listening to the webinar, $179 is now $139 uh, with the coupon code webinar 40. So if you go to our website, uh, smartgrouptraining.com, click on the products tab or just, you know, go directly to this link. When you check out, you can type in the coupon code webinar 40 and you'll instantaneously get $40 off the product. Um, if you have any questions about anything that was in the webinar today or any questions about smart group training volume one, uh, anything at all, please contact us. We're here to help. We love talking to other trainers. We, we, it's, it's what we do. It's our passion. We want to help other trainers improve their group training. And, and uh, I could sit here and spend all day just talking about group training if I didn't have to go do some group training. So um, once again, we appreciate it. We appreciate you listening to the webinar. We appreciate all the support that we've had in putting this product out and, and, and creating our website and creating everything. And um, it's been a great ride, and, and we are so pumped to continue it and really start the evolution of group personal training. And we thank you once again, and we look forward to changing the industry with you. Thanks again.